some time ago, some of you will remember, I used to do a bit of a series on crimes of my childhood, whereby I would depict <laughs> some of the crazy shit I did as a kid. And I'm just biding my time. I'll show you around, people. This is one of the three little parked areas that you can find a little bit of sanctity. And in the background there, you can see the Lisbon Bridge. And I've been over there a few times, but really, I can't stand it. And so I have to come back to where I feel completely at home. And that's like lying on this bench, underneath this tree, in the shade. It's 28 degrees. And I'm just lying, stretching, yawning. Oh, nothing to accomplish at all today or any other day and so then my mind was drifting and <laughs> oh fuck uh, a scenario came to mind and there's a moral <laughs> and so I'll tell you what it is when I was about 14 and my elder brother was 60. We lived in the same bedroom, or well, we shared the same bedroom, lived in the same house. And we didn't get along at all for those teenage years. If we weren't fighting, then I was snitching on him for feeding this and doing that, and always up to some mischief going on somewhere. And so one night, my older brother, he comes home from being out on the piss, from the local boozer. And at this time, 16, he's got his moped and, you know, he's out and about to a few of the, the neighbouring villages. And that's kind of like, that's great, you know, from a 14 year old's perspective. Can't wait. We used to say in the village, when we get our wheels, when I get my wheels, I'm going to go here and I'm going to do this and do that. So anyway, he had his wheels. And one night he came back and in the early hours of the morning he was retching up out of the bedroom window. Now he had to like climb on my bed uh, to retch out the window because my bed was right near the window. And I'm like, what the fuck? Right, you wait till the morning, I'm telling dad. And so in the morning I get up and I thought, right, I've got him this time. And I looked out the window and there's all this spew on a flat roof just outside um, the bedroom window. And so I told the old man about this, and I thought, great glee. I said, you know what Wayne did last night? He was sick all over the roof, nah, nah, nah. And so the old man went, oh, you, cunt, get that fucking spew cleaned up off that roof. And so he had to get out on the roof um, with uh, a bucket and a brush, and uh, then he had to wash it off with uh, soapy water and it's quite an undignified affair on his account and <laughs> I was getting great pleasure from this and my brother was looking at me thinking yeah, I'll fucking get you back and so a couple of nights later I actually went out one of my first um, sessions on alcohol and I was around a friend's house and we'd managed to get hold of some baby shams and some small bottles of bitter and I think at the time I was working bottling up at the local local boozer you know when you, you replenish the, the empty bottles behind the counter from the, the bottle uh, shed outside well I was doing that job and so um, I, I would leave the key off the, the latch of the the outhouse bottling um, uh, shed thing where all the booze was kept and me and my mate we used to go down there 
on his uh, Yamaha FS160. Uh, this uh, moped, because he was 16 at the time, and we used to, to, to nick a couple of crates of this boots, and we'd take it round um, our friend's house, and uh, we'd have you know a few parties. So this particular occasion, I um, you know, drank more than I could handle, and I got home, and I was in such a deep coma of a sleep, and I was dying to go for a piss, you know, I guess. And then you start dreaming, don't you? And when you're younger, you, <laughs> you don't really, you can't, because it's, it's kind of new to you, distinguish between a dream and the reality when you're in that state. And so, what I did then, when I was dreaming, I'm dying to go to the toilet. And so I thought, right, oh, I'm gonna go to the toilet now. And what I did is, I got up out of bed. I went to the toilet. The door was closed, so I opened the door, pushed it open, and I switched the light on, and I started to piss. I was like, oh, oh man, this feels so good. And just as I started to piss, I heard my old man's voice shouting out my name with some sort of urgency. Aaron! I'm like, what the fuck? Carried on pissing. Aaron! I'm like, holy shit. Can't a man just have a piss in his fucking dream, you know, um, without the old man fucking butting in? What the fuck's going on? So I continued to piss and like, I was really busting to go to piss. And again, Aaron, Aaron. And so I opened my eyes like this. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I looked down from where this noise was coming from. And I was in my old man's bedroom. I wasn't in the toilet. I was in reality, in my old man's bedroom. Pissing on his chest of drawers. <laughs> And the old man was in bed, all like this. Aaron, Aaron. And I looked at him, I thought, oh, holy fuck, oh, holy fuck. And I was still half pissed, I thought, this is too much for fucking me to handle. And so I just turned the light off and I closed the door and I went back to bed. I woke up in the morning and it was late and I could hear downstairs uh, the stepmother cooking Sunday lunch. And the old man always used to have a hand in it and I could hear their interaction. And I was trying to gauge what time it was by the light. I thought, oh fuck, it's about 11. Sounds like, you know, dinner's well on its way. And so I laid there for like 10 minutes thinking, fucking hell, I had a fucked up dream last night. Oh my God, thank God that wasn't real. That was proper embarrassing. And so then, again, the ominous voice of my old man, Aaron! He shouts up the stairs. And I was like, yeah? And I thought he was gonna say, dinner's almost ready. But he said, you better come down here and get a bucket of soap and water and clean that fucking piss up. You pissed all over my chest and drawers last night. <laughs> and I'm like, you're fucking joking. No, no, I'm still dreaming, I'm still dreaming. So I slowly got dressed, sheepishly goes downstairs and I get this bucket and the old man just looks at me like that. Looks away, continue what he was doing. I filled up the bucket of water and a couple of sisters and the stepmom's there looking at me and I'm thinking, oh, what a cunt. Go upstairs with a bucket of water and the sponge and I'm scrubbing it and I'm washing everything down and I do a good job, nice and conscientiously. It took about half an hour. Oh boy, I goes back down anyway, emptied the bucket out and then nothing was ever said about it again. Of course I was sheepish at the table, but nothing was ever said. And so we, we kind of all forgot about that episode. But the moral of the story is, is never get too haughty with your own morals and never get into a position whereby you don't think that you're ever going to be in a position whereby what you do is compromised. You see, if we go around 
and we're like, oh, look at what this person's done. Oh, look at what that person's done. And then one day, for whatever reason, you end up having to do something similar. Then you're just like the biggest hypocrite in town, aren't you? And it's much worse being that hypocrite than just being a person that does the stuff that other people do. And, you know, people go, oh, he's doing it as well now. You know, no big deal. But to be a hypocrite and then do it, oh, you know, people won't forget about that. And then if you've got a high standard of morals and you're always looking down upon other people and then you end up, you know, breaking uh, one of these standards of yours and, oh, goodness me, then everybody around you can see again what, what a fool you are, what a hypocrite. And so that was a lesson I learned very early. And it was so embarrassing. And my brother, oh, he didn't let me live that one down. You know, because only two nights before, he had the bucket and sponge clean up his sick. But, you know, I was cleaning off the piss from my old man's chest of drawers and the carpet. And my old man saw me, you know, with a light on, pissing, just standing there. Oh, fuck off. Pissing and pissing and pissing. You know, man. Where did that come from? I'm sitting here under this tree getting all this chi energy. And then that thought came into my mind. I never chose that. It's the last thing I want to reflect upon. Oh, but it was funny. <laughs> okay now. Alright guys.